Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Woodwork for Humans, the series where I am always telling you, go down to the flea market, go to the tag sale, buy some old tools, get them fixed up, get to work. But if you do that, you're probably going to end up with a pile of hammers and hatchets, and the heads are going to be in great shape. The handles, well, they might be toast. And honestly, a lot of these handles weren't so great even when they were new. But you know, handles are made out of wood. This is a woodworking channel. I think we all know where this is going. You know, it seems like no matter how many old tools I restore, the pile of tools that needs restoration stays the same. For instance, I've got this hewing hatchet, which would be great for green woodwork, and I have this cross peen lineman's hammer. It wasn't made for blacksmithing, but the size and shape are excellent for iron work. The handle is decent, but it's splintering, and it's not going to last much longer. The hatchet is much worse. The handle is badly damaged, and it's much too thin and long anyway. I can't imagine having any control gripping this piece of spaghetti. We're going back to the drawing board on both of these tools. Getting the old handles out can be tricky, especially when the previous owner pounded in a bunch of extra wedges and nails to try and tighten up a loose head. We're going to avoid all that nonsense. You can do this work in your leg vise, but pad the jaws to keep the hammerhead from chewing them up. Grab a drill and a dull old drill bit, and go to work in the center of the handle. Keep away from the walls of the hammerhead. You're just trying to open up a space in the middle. As you're trying to get the old handle out, you might wonder why it's so difficult. Well, it all comes down to the shape of the hammer eye. Here's a hammer. The eye holds the handle in the head. Now, you're probably imagining a hole with smooth sides, but if it were shaped like that, the hammerhead would fly right off. So that ain't gonna work. Real hammer eyes are actually hourglass shaped. They're usually flared a bit more at the bottom, and the handle is shaped to fit that flare. At the top, wood and metal wedges are driven into the handle to make it flare out and fill the top of the eye. A properly installed handle with a flare at either end will stay solid, even under years of heavy use. Of course, this clever locking system makes it a giant pain in the ass to get old handles out. The drilling gets rid of some material, so you can come in with a big punch and a hammer. Instead of hitting straight down, which wouldn't do anything, I'm coming in at an angle so that I can collapse the wood into the center hole I just drilled out. I flip the head over a lot as I work. Going from both directions really helps loosen up that compressed old wood. You'll need to be a little patient, but the old handle will come out, and then you're ready to put in a new one. For your new handle, wood selection matters a lot. You can't just use whatever hardwood is sitting around. Hickory, ash, and oak are the traditional choices. Hickory is almost certainly the best one, but I never seem to have any of it in the shop when I need to make a handle. Ash is also really good, but I find it to be a little bit too springy and flexible. So I pretty much always go with white oak, and I pick my stock very carefully. The end grain will tell you if you have a good piece of oak. The piece on the left has a dark color and tiny little pores. It's all heartwood, and it's mostly slow-growing summer wood, so it's dense. The piece in the middle has bigger pores, so there's less actual wood. And that light color in the lower corner is sapwood. I don't want any of that in my handle. On the right is a piece of red oak, and the pores are so big that I might lose my keys in one of them. Red oak is great for furniture, but it's lousy for handles. Use your old handle and the head to figure out how much wood you need. Then, add a couple extra inches. You can recover from a lot of mistakes if you have some additional stock to work with. With my billet cut, I shoot one end square and use the hammerhead to trace the outline of the eye. Then, I cross cut all four corners with a fine saw. I'm going to split off most of the waste, and those stop cuts will keep the splits from going too far. Pick your biggest chisel and start splitting off waste at the corners. You can take out big chunks at the beginning, and then make your cuts smaller as you get closer to your pencil line. You can see how my wood is splitting really straight. This is how I know I've picked good stock. My finished handle will have continuous grain running all the way through it. Long, straight grain like that resists splitting and makes the wood easy to work. If these first few splits go crooked, I throw away the billet and start over. Once you get close to your line, put the mallet down and do a little paring right on the top edge. You're just trying to get the handle a little way into the eye. Press the hammerhead down over the wood and pull it off. All the rust and gunk from inside the eye will stain the wood. These stains are your high spots. Trim them off and then fit the head again. To get a good fit, you're going to have to repeat this process many times. Each time you fit the head, 
you'll get it down a little further. Go slowly here. You're going for a very tight fit. After the first half inch, you probably won't be able to force the head down with hand pressure. Give it a tap with a rubber mallet, and then take a wooden mallet and give the end of the handle a few sharp whacks until the head stops moving. This will force the handle much deeper into the head, and you probably won't be able to pull it off by hand. Go back to your rubber mallet and tap the head off with a few light hits, alternating sides. This will slowly wiggle the head back off. Sometimes, when I'm getting the head off like this, I snap the handle. When that happens, it means I didn't pick good enough wood, and I start over. Just like before, I look for brown rust stains and trim them off with my chisel. Then I fit the head again. After a couple rounds of fitting, you should be able to knock the head all the way down to your shoulder. The hardest part is over, and you can be 99% sure that the handle is going to work out fine. Shaping the handle is straightforward bench work, and it's a lot easier than making furniture components. You can do almost all of it with a scrub or jack plane. I start by taking off the corners, then I work the faces down to their final thickness and slowly work my way around the handle, getting a nice oval shape. When your handle is roughed in, you can switch to the spoke shave. I made this little wooden one just to prove that it could be done, but I've honestly ended up liking it a lot better than my fancy vintage ones, at least for curved work like this. I've got a whole video on making this tool and plans if you want to make your own. A lot of this work can be done by feel. I just grab the handle and then trim away anything that feels high or sharp or rough. Everything needs to be smooth. Edges cause blisters. Pay attention to grain direction while you work. If you're getting tear out, flip the tool around. I've heard some people say that you shouldn't push a spoke shave, but those people are wrong. The tool works just as well in both directions. And if your wood is tearing out, you should probably do something about that. Once the handle is shaped, we need to get rid of that big shoulder and fit the handle to the lower flare of the eye. This is straightforward, bevel down chisel work. You're just making a smooth curve from the fat part to the skinny part. After the chisel, I come in with a curved rasp or file to smooth things out, and I usually follow up with a bit of sandpaper. This build has a couple of specialty tools in it, but none of them is expensive. I'll link to them down in the description. When the head is back on the handle and seated with a few mallet taps, you can see that it comes right down on the flare. I've got a few ragged fibers where the handle is still too fat, but I'll clean those up before the final fitting. My hammer head has led a hard life, and I should clean it up before it goes onto the handle. You could do this by hand with sandpaper, but I just love the wire wheel on a nice bench grinder. Nothing gets rid of paint and rust so quickly, and it leaves a nice satin shine on the steel. Everything's ready for final fit up, and the handle fits the lower flare of the eye perfectly. Now all we have to do is make the top of the handle flare out so that everything's locked solidly in place. We're going to do that by cutting a narrow slit along the top of the handle and then making a wedge. I'm using walnut here, mostly for contrast, and I'm cutting it at an angle and letting my saw break out at the end of the cut. That gives me a nice feather edge that's easy to start. The wedge gets a shot of wood glue, and then I tap it in with a hammer. If you feel like your wedge might break, put a scrap of wood on top of it and hit that with the hammer instead. My wedge does snap, but by then, it's all the way down anyway, and it doesn't matter. To be honest, I usually just keep hitting my wedges until they snap. It seems to work fine. Now, on most commercial hammers, there's a second wedge called a lock wedge. It's made of steel, and it's got little ridges on it like this, and these are driven in across that first wooden wedge to lock everything in place. Now, these things do work really well. I keep a jar of them in the tool drawer, but honestly, digging them out of broken handles is such a pain. It's really annoying, and if we're honest, every handle is gonna break eventually. So we're gonna do something better on this build. I'm going to come in with a narrow chisel, split the wood crosswise, and then just cross wedge it with another piece of walnut. I've seen a lot of nice hand forged hammers with this style of double wooden wedge. It holds really well. You can finish your handle pretty much any way you want, but there's a simple finish that works great. Set the hammer up far away from dust and wood shavings, and then just burn it with a plumbing torch. Keep the torch moving around the wood and get everything a nice deep brown color. While the handle is still hot, Give it a quick sand with medium grit paper, and then slather on a couple heavy coats of boiled linseed oil. While the wood is still hot, all the pores and cracks are wide open, and the wood will absorb a lot of oil. After the wood cools, give it a quick sand with 220 grit, and you'll have a surprisingly durable and comfortable finish. I have handles that I did this way several years ago, and they still look and feel great. 
Now, not every woodworker is going to need to put new handles on hammers, but most of us have axes and hatchets, and those things need new handles all the time. Doing an axe head is a lot like doing a hammer, but the eye has this teardrop shape. Split the waist off just like we did before, and we can move right along to seating the handle in the head. Just like with the hammer, we need to shape the handle to fit the flare of the eye. This time, I'm focusing much more on the wide sides of the handle. The narrow ends don't need much attention. I'm going with a custom shape for this handle, and I'm getting pressed for time, so I rough it out on the bandsaw, and I can get right to shaping with a spoke shape. You can see that I've gone with a pretty unique shape for this handle. The original was too long and skinny for a heavy head like this. My handle is shorter and fatter, and I've curved it so it won't fly out of my hand, and so that I can choke up on the handle for a controlled detail cut. This is an important part of making your own handles. You can make them to fit your hand and your work. This hatchet head is actually in great shape, but it is absolutely covered in crud. I take it to the wire wheel, but I want to go even further, so I use the random orbital sander with some 220 grit to really bring up the shine. Then, because I'm totally spoiled, I also take it to my buffing wheel. The finished head looks a lot different than what I started with. Now I've got the head and the handle ready for final fit up. I've cut a really wide wedge and it goes in with wood glue and the handle is nicely seated. Axes don't usually have cross wedges, but I'm doing this one just as an experiment. Once the wedge is in, it can be trimmed with a coping saw and filed flat for a nice finish. For this tool, I'm going straight for a boiled linseed oil finish. Once it's dry, it'll give the wood a little protection while still giving me a lot of grip. I put extra oil on that double wedge to make it swell and fill the eye even better. It also looks cool. The finished tool is really something that I can be proud of. Making and fitting your own tool handles is not difficult. It's also free and you know exactly what you're getting. Now, you might be intimidated by making your own handle shapes, but you really shouldn't be. You can just sort of go by feel and do what works for you. It's also really easy to copy other handle shapes. For instance, last year I went to a smithing demonstration by the great Patrick Quinn. He's a really well-known blacksmith around here. He let me try out one of his hammers and the handle on that thing was magic. I couldn't believe how good it felt. So I snapped a picture. And when I got home, I just copied that profile onto one of the hammers that I already liked. It was not difficult. You can do this. And I should mention that the only reason I know about hammers, the only reason that I can fit handles, is because I'm a proud member of the Western Reserve Artist Blacksmiths Association. It is a fantastic club filled with great people, and we are currently shut down because of COVID, so I haven't seen any of those guys for months now. Not that I miss them or anything. And before I go, I have to mention my patrons on Patreon. None of this would be possible without their support and encouragement. If you'd like to be a member of that amazing community of craftspeople, go on over to patreon.com slash Rex Kruger and check out the early access, special rewards, discussion forum, and other extras that I have just for the people who make this content possible. I'll be back next week with another project, probably something more along the usual woodworking lines, but Whatever it is, I promise it'll be fun. Thanks for watching.